Okay guys, um, now we are looking at lecture 14 for the accelerometer. Okay, you know about accelerometer, you have a bit with you, most every day you carry it with because it's basically installed in your phone. So, so the accelerometer is basically some kind of motion sensor. It is designed to basically measure the rate of change, position, location, or even displacement of objects attached to it. The first derivatives of this uh, device uh, velocity, and the second derivative is basically acceleration. Okay. Um, that basically it gives you that kind of uh, information sensor. It's a kind of motion sensor, sensitive to motion and vibration. It gives you position, it gives you um, acceleration, it gives you velocity. So in terms of position, basically it gives you x, y, and z, based on all the uh, speed, right? So type of motion that can can be ob obtained by the sensor is the first one is rectilinear, where uh, you have x position of uh, coordinate system x, y, and z, you have v the velocity and uh, acceleration in a straight line. Uh, typically, the maximum acceleration is less, less than 1 g, but, but you can have different um, limits when you choose different kind of uh, accelerometer. Second one is uh, angular information. If you if you have the sensor in your hand or in your, or in your phone, if you give uh, some kind of rotation, they will give you how many degrees you are rotating, okay? Then you have vibration, of course, it's measured in terms of uh, G, okay? Then the last one is the shock, okay? Um, it's a very sudden uh, movement. So from one accelerometer, you can have four of this information. You can use it to detect uh, this for um, situation. Okay. For this is a typical profile of uh, shock acceleration. You have you have graph uh, you know from zero it bounces to the peak, then it goes back crossing the x axis, which, which gives you the time delay. Then it will continue to bounce until it stops. All right. So you may be familiar with this, with this graph. Um, um, no, in the lump subject control and for the second order system, or first order or second order. Um, so accelerometer is, is basically designed based on the uh, and Hooke's law, so you must know this. Very, very popular in the aircraft, satellite, uh, in which you have a lot of rotating mass. Okay. So it is based on the Hooke's and Newton law, where you have all these formula coming in, right? Look at these two diagram. You have spring mass with no acceleration, and you have acceleration with displacement from x zero to x. All right. So acceleration is basically constructed based on these um, components and principle based on Hooke's and Newton. And in the sensor, basically, you have spring and you have mass. Basically, spring and mass is basically tuned to give you the range of uh, operation that you do, basically. Right? Um, yeah, the same thing I've explained. So, when, you, when basically uh, you have the system of spring and mass, you have, you have um, some kind of uh, go back and forth uh, um, behavior and from here you may expect that this thing have some kind of fixed oscillation all right and of course things that oscillates you know they oscillate at certain uh, natural frequency because of the design okay you can you can look at the, look at the construction basic, basic construction of any accelerometer you have a spring which has uh, certain number of constant which you can choose and the mass also you can choose how many grams how many kilograms so 
based on what you have uh, chosen, basically you are producing a specific kind of natural frequency. Okay. Um, of course, this thing oscillates based on this uh, frequency, and finally it comes to complete stop because of friction. Okay. Um, so the behavior of the oscillation is governed by this transition response. Uh, x uh, of t, uh, you have uh, in position x o, x naught, and then you have uh, exponential of alpha minus alpha t. Alpha is the damping coefficient because you are looking at spring, you have friction, you are talking about damping. Right, and then you have fn as a natural frequency. Okay, so this is the typical behavior uh, oscillations of any accelerometer sensor. Uh, once you induce force and vibration, it will go to the maximum. When you stop uh, inducing those things, they will k and go down to zero, basically. But the oscillation, the frequency, everything is depending on the natural frequency. And the natural frequency is defined by spring and mass that you are choosing. Okay, um, this is again Newton's and Hooke's law. It applies to the condition of the accelerometer sensor. Okay. Same thing, the spring and mass uh, stuff. Okay. Nothing new there. This is the actual response of spring mass system to vibration. Um, the actual force, you can see the explanation uh, previously, the resonance effect. Okay. Was from the formula you can always calculate and predict, but in, in reality they will a little bit different kind of uh, performance basically. Okay. So this is something to do with the natural frequency. So they say here generally the accelerometer is not used near the resonance of this natural frequency because of high nullability. So this is the rule of thumb there. And the frequency that you are interested with is, is less than um, it's a lot less than the natural frequency divided by 2.5 right if if your device is having natural frequency of let's say uh, 1000 hertz so you have to choose the application you know way below than 1000 hertz this is the rule of thumb of selecting the running so this is an uh, example you can uh, go to the um, um, this example, you have, you have you have solution that you can try it yourself. Basically, this is um, determine the measurable selection G and of course natural frequency using the formula. Here you can basically uh, put in the variable uh, the given information and find it. So this is a different kind of package of um, accelerometer. Of course, it is, it is being used uh, different package for different kind of application. Okay, so other than uh, what you see here, you have a good kind of uh, accelerometer with this construction. So it's a balanced uh, tube tube. If you experience any vibration in motion, delta H will be uh, experiencing changing, and from there you basically um, correlate. The amount of vibration that, that this YouTube is experiencing okay, by looking at the delta H, the changes in the magnitude level. Okay. Um, Post rebalanced accelerometer, it's the same thing basically. You have the measure spring, and this time you have, you have the depth of. Okay, and you see this thing in the control subject, characterization is more or less similar. Okay. So we are now looking at different type of accelerometer. First, you have um, um, the basic difference here. It says that it's a method of mass displacement. Okay, rest are all the same. They are using um, spring. They are using they call that mass, and some of them are using damper. 
And of course, when you have those in place, you are still following the same principle. You have natural frequency in place. So um, this is then potential metric here. If the mass and the spring is experiencing some kind of uh, vibration, they will they will connect. They will, they will be connected to, uh, to the viper arm of potentiometer, and from there you are. Uh, as, as the mass is moving, actually the potentiometer also changing its resistance. All right, and this is this is how you measure how much uh, vibration or acceleration the, the accelerometer or the mass is experienced. Larger the vibration, the larger the wiper arm will move, and therefore you have a larger amount of resistance. All right, next you have LVDT. You have seen LVDT from the previous inductive uh, sensor. So um, the core directly converted into the proportional frequency voltage. All right, then the movement of the core is basically connected to 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 the to the mass of accelerator uh, sensor. And of course, when this thing moves, you will have output coming out from secondary core of the coil of the LVDT. So this is also the same uh, inductive principle we have seen just now. The, the difference between all of these uh, application is the position of the mass that connects to the sensor itself, right? To the object that being sensed, right? This is a piezoelectric type. Okay. They are all the same except for the mass positioning. Okay. So this is about uh, piezoelectric uh, accelerometer. They say here, of course, you know, piezoelectric is based on this crystal thing. When it is being uh, stressed or pushed by the mass of accelerometer, they, they will give up some kind of voltage and current, basically, from there. Okay. Um, so when you use accelerometer, you need to the conditioner, and it's a kind of integrator. Okay, you have to know that this circuit is the circuit is used as signal conditioner for accelerometer. You can go through the example. Uh, I'll not go through this. This is a story which you can read yourself for the application of um, accelerometer okay, in the power drill uh, in the suspension system. So that's basically the end of this lecture on accelerometer. Thank you.